Hello everyone, welcome to my talk. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, making your progressive web apps looking and launching beautifully. Um, icons on our screens are older than many of us, including me. Uh, the first icons we saw on a grid on our personal computer were rendered on a Xerox uh, 8010 Star Workstation. Uh, the first modern desktop personal computer created by researchers at uh, Xerox Park in 1981. Invented by Simit, designed by Cox, it uh, presented a square grid, simple looks, consistent style. Uh, in 1985, Windows 1.0 demonstrates the world famous floppy disk icon. Uh, kids nowadays also know it by the save icon name. Uh, when we reach 90s, colors and three simple dimensions put their roots down for good. Uh, a constant stream of technical improvements uh, supports the evolution. Uh, basic signs are overgrown with the shadows and shades. Um, files, computers, pencils and trash bins toss and turn at different angles. Um, icons begin to climb the long stairs uh, to the dream world of reality. Uh, with Windows 3 displayed on the right, we feel the grid and it's easy to see uh, the, the icons come from one production line. In the 2000s, uh, new millennium uh, realistic boom and uh, literal craze reaches its peak. Finally, they made it. It looks uh, like real. Uh, what's more, it's hyper-polished, shiny, blinky, glossy. Uh, it's transparent, multi-layered. Uh, multi-shaded, blurred and softened is all bigger, better and more. Uh, photo illustrative icon style smashes the idea of an icon being just a symbol. Uh, the pictures grow huge, have alpha channels and 8-bit transparency masks. What a joy it was. When we slowly marched uh, to the anterior uh, 2000s, Apple with its iOS allows us to carry the semi-realistic little pictures with us everywhere we go. Uh, an open hand handset alliance was born with Android uh, as the main operating system. Since then, we have uh, all lived our mobile lives with the life mimicking icons. Starting at the end 2000s, Microsoft Metro Design uh, language was arguably one of the earliest mass market um, applications of flat design philosophy. Uh, based on principles of minimalistic uh, civic graphic design, Metro as a design language is what we can describe as purely digital. Uh, and Metro avoided the use of trans translucency and shadows uh, in favor of starkly minimalistic um, and flat designs. Shapes were simply and angular rather than having rounded corners, uh, something evident in the flat rectangular leaf tiles uh, prevalent in many Metro uh, implementations. And Google brought material design uh, into our lives uh, with Android and Chrome OS. It is intended to make better use of available space uh, and bring a consistent user experience, whether viewed on a smartphone, tablet, or desktop. Jumpstart to 2021. Uh, let's discover what kind of looks and launch experiences we can deliver uh, to multiple platforms at once by using the power of progressive web apps. I'm going to show my demos over the Twitter's Pro progressive web app because it's one of the best uh, progressive web apps out there, in my opinion, and it implements many great user experiences and features of progressive web apps. Um, and you might have seen this image on your LinkedIn posted by someone criticizing project development deadlines. Uh, I'm referencing it for the sake of small iterations. So we will have our humble start with the looks of our app and hopefully make it beautiful by the end of this uh, presentation. I'm Ander Jalan. I'm an independent software engineer and web GDE. Uh, you might also know me by my uh, open source library called PWA Asset Generator and you can reach out to me uh, by using my Twitter handle under Jalan. PWAs are modern, uh, high quality applications built using web technology. Um, PWAs offer similar capabilities to iOS, Android, and desktop apps. They are reliable even in unstable network conditions and are installable, making uh, it easier for users to find and use them. And these are the common questions raised during the design and development process of a progressive web app. Um, like, what are the icon sizes uh, we need to aim for cross-platform compatibility? What are the safe areas to consider when designing PWA icons? And should I aim for a round icon or a square one? How does it look in a dark mode? Let's try to find out answers together. By crafting a simple manifest file, we can comply with many platforms and systems and deliver great user experiences across devices. 
the web app manifest is a JSON file that tells the browser about your progressive web app and how it should behave when installed on the user's desktop or mobile device. A typical manifest file includes the app name, the icons the app should use, um, and the URL that should be opened when the app is launched. To have an app, hence its icon on our system, we need to add it to our home screen and desktops. Most users are familiar with installing applications and the benefits of an installed experience. Installed applications appear on operating system, launch surfaces such as the applications folder on macOS, the start menu on Windows, and the home screen on Android, iOS, and Chrome OS. Installed applications also show up in the activity switcher, device search, engines such as Spotlight, and its uh, content sharing sheets. Most browsers indicate uh, to the user that your progressive web app is installable when it meets a certain criteria. Uh, example indicators include uh, an install button in the address bar, like we, we have seen in the previous slide, or an install menu item in the overflow menu. Uh, in addition, when the criteria is met, many browsers will fire a before install prompt event, allowing you to provide a custom uh, in-app user experience that will trigger the install flow within your app. Uh, and you also need to um, meet with install criteria for a manifest file, uh, like providing your short name or name. You must provide at least the short name and name property. If both are provided, short name is used on the user's home screen, a launcher, or other places uh, where space may be limited. Name is used when the app is installed and launched on mobile. Um, and when user ins users install your pre progressive web app, you can define a set of icons for the browser to use on the home screen, app launcher, task switcher, splash screen, and so on. Um, That's how we populate the icons field in our manifest file. It's a property uh, of an array of image objects. Uh, each object must include a source, a size property, and the type of the image. And to use maskable icons, uh, sometimes referred uh, to as adaptive icons on Android, you will also need to add purpose or any maskable uh, to the icon property. For Chrome, you must provide uh, at least a 192 times 192 pixel icon and a 512 times 512 pixel icon. If only those two icons are provided, Chrome will automatically scale the icons to fit the device. Uh, if you would prefer to scale your own icons and adjust uh, them for pixel perfection, um, it's recommended to provide icons in increments of 48 dp. And the start URL is required uh, and tells the browser where your application should start when it's launched and prevents the app from starting on whatever page the user was on uh, when they added your application to their home screen. Your start URL should direct the user straight into the app um, rather than a product landing page. Think about what the user will want, want to do one, once they uh, open your application and place them there. And display property uh, lets your application to behave uh, when it's launched. Uh, you can provide a value like full screen, uh, which opens the web application without any browser UI and takes up the entirety of the available display area. Um, and you can also provide standalone value, uh, which opens the web application to look and feel like a standalone app. The app runs in its own window, uh, separate from the win browser and hides standard browser UI elements like the URL bar. And the minimal UI property, uh, this mod is similar to standalone, but provides the user a minimal set of UI elements for controlling navigation, such as back and reload buttons of your browser. Uh, there's a new beautiful PWA install UI, now enabled for all users, starting with Chrome 92 on Android. Uh, the screenshots. Uh, screenshots property is an array of image objects representing your application in common usage scenarios. Each object must include the source, a sizes property, and the type of image. In Chrome, the image must respond to certain criteria. Width and height must be at least 320 pixels and at most uh, 3840 pixels. The maximum dimension can't be more than 2.3 times as long as the minimum dimension. Screenshots must have the same aspect ratio, and only JPEG and PNG image formats are supported. Having the installability sum up, uh, let's start our icon development journey with two round icons. 
192 pixels wide, another one 512 pixels wide. By doing so, we make sure we meet installability criteria of our PWA. And we see examples of two different rendering demo uh, of this icon. Uh, Samsung Galaxy's One UI on the left uh, and Google Pixel's Android on the right. Uh, as you might notice, there's a white margin around the icon on Samsung's One UI and Chrome's icon is attached to the app icon on Google's Android. We will look for solutions to fill the white margin with Twitter's icon's uh, blue background color and remove the Chrome icon attachment. Uh, and when added to the desktop, uh, on the top taskbar, uh, we see our PWA's icon rendered nicely on macOS, and Chrome automatically packages our PWA uh, as a macOS application, and it puts it in a special folder called uh, Chrome Applications on our system. And on the bottom taskbar, we see our icon integrated in the Chrome OS naturally. Uh, it exactly looks like how I wanted it. Uh, one idea to fill the white margin on Samsung's One UI is to provide a square icon, filling all the empty space of our icon's artwork. Uh, when used a square icon on Google's Android, uh, the OS downscaled it into a round icon space and again attached the Chrome icon. On Samsung's One UI, icon is rendered nicely on the home screen, but the way it's rendered on the activity switcher is still problematic uh, with rounding white margins in the available zone of the icon. And having a square icon on our desktop taskbars simply not fitting in the design flow of, of the operating system. A round icon was a much better fit for desktop platforms, in my opinion. So if you inspect the Twitter mobile app, you will see both a round and a square icon is used. But how and why? Let's talk about maskable icons. Maskable icons are a new icon format uh, that give you more control and let your progressive web app use adaptive icons. If you supply uh, a maskable icon, your icon can fill up the entire shape and look great on all Android devices and desktop platforms. Depending on the skin design system and the OS is rendered on, a maskable icon can take many shapes. Here you see some of the examples of masks applied to our maskable icon. Uh, considering the amount of masks out there, we should carefully design our maskable icon to make sure it renders nicely in all variations. Luckily, there is a well-defined and standardized minimum safe zone that all platforms respect. Uh, the important parts of your icon, such as your logo, should be within a circular area in the center of the icon, with a radius equal to 40% of the icon width. The other 10% edge may be cropped. All pixels in this zone are guaranteed to be seen in all masks. Uh, pixels outside the safe zone uh, are not guaranteed to be visible, depending on the applied mask. By adding the purpose property uh, with the value of maskable uh, to the icon resource in our manifest file, we can define an icon as a maskable icon. We see how nicely it's masked with a squircle mask on the one, uh, one UI. Um, and you can see the demo of a maskable icon rendered perfectly on Google Pix uh, Pixels Android. Note that you must uh, sign in with your Google account in Chrome to remove that uh, Chrome badge displayed on our icons earlier. And by adding the round icons with the default purpose uh, to the icons list of our manifest file, we make sure our PWS icon is displayed perfectly across platforms, including desktop, mobile. Let's talk about app shortcuts. We can get things done quickly with app shortcuts. Uh, they give quick access to a handful of common actions that users need frequently um, to improve users' productivity and facilitate re-engagement with the key tasks the web platform now support, uh, supports app shortcuts. They allow web developers to provide quick access to a handful of common actions that users need frequently. App shortcuts helps uh, uh, user, users, as I, as I said, uh, with, with the frequent tasks. And this menu is invoked uh, by right-clicking the app icon in the taskbar on Windows uh, or dock on macOS on the user's desktop or long pressing uh, the app's launcher icon on Android. The app shortcuts menu is shown only for progressive web apps uh, that are installed on the user's desktop or mobile device. Um, app shortcuts are optionally defined in the web app manifest. Uh, 
as we talked about earlier, a JSON file that tells the browser about a progressive web app uh, and how it should behave when installed uh, on user's desktop or mobile device. Um, more specifically, they are declared in the shortcuts array member. Um, you see an example of potential uh, web application manifest uh, defining shortcuts. Uh, and within this example, we see um, a shortcut for, for a new tweet uh, to trigger with the, uh, with the right menu of our icon on a desktop view. Um, and each member of shortcuts array is a dictionary that contains at least a name and a URL. Uh, other members are optional. Uh, if you want to provide icons, uh, you can provide them in increments of 48 dp. Um, Otherwise, it's recommended that you provide a single 192 2 times 192 pixel icon. Um, when your application first launches on a mobile, uh, it can take a moment for the browser to spin up and the initial content to begin rendering. Instead of showing a white screen that may look uh, to the user like the app is stalled, uh, the browser will show a splash screen until the first paint. Chrome automatically creates the splash screen from the manifest properties, specifically name, background color, and icons. This demo shows how a splash screen behaves when created with, a, with square icons in the manifest. And this alternative use case demo shows how a splash screen behaves when created with the round icons. This is another benefit of combining round icons uh, with maskable square icons. Um, so you can see it, it fits uh, nicely uh, in the splash screen as well. Um, web app manifest specs are partially supported on iOS. Uh, to create beautiful launch experience uh, for our PWs on iOS as well, we need to use alternative solutions. Uh, PWA Compat is an open source library that brings the web app manifest to non-compliant browsers for better PWA. Um, and this mostly means creating split screens and icons for mobile Safari. Um, so it creates icons and split screens on the fly uh, and mimics Android system behavior on iOS. PWA Asset Generator uh, is a simple to use CLI tool that generates all the icons and split screens you need across uh, platforms, including iOS. Um, because you, you need to generate so many uh, images uh, and so many tags uh, in order to comply with, um, with iOS expectations to render icons uh, and splash screens beautifully on their devices. Uh, this tool automates this, uh, this difficult process. It also generates uh, the meta tags, um, as I mentioned, and it uses web technologies to render uh, the icons and splash screens, so sky's the limit when it's about your creativity. Um, during the development of your progressive web app, it's important to test your manifest file. Uh, you need to make sure uh, our app looks and launch, launches nicely. And the testing manifest file can simply start with the dev tools of, um, of our browser. Uh, for example, Chrome dev tools uh, provides a preview of our manifest and shows uh, warnings and improvement ideas about, uh, about our use case. Um, and to take it one step further, we can test on real devices. Uh, Samsung Developers Platform uh, provides free to use a remote test lab, which we can connect um, our applications to a lot of uh, physical devices. Um, this is especially handy if you want to use, uh, and use your application across uh, various devices and see its uh, behavior on uh, devices such as foldable devices. And if you, if you like to emulate um, a virtual device on your local machine, you can also use uh, Android Studio and Android Virtual Device. For, for instance, um, I ran my demo on, uh, on a Pixel device that is emulated on my system, and I took um, video recordings and screenshots out of it. Uh, thank you very much for listening. If you have uh, any questions, uh, you can reach out to me uh, on Twitter. Uh, my Twitter handle is under Jaylan. And if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them.